Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me in a new video. Today I have a special one for you because I have been working on this snow leopard for the past weeks and it's the first time that I used colored pencils on pastel matte. So um, yeah, I did the background in pastels and the leopard in colored pencil and I really, really enjoyed it. The whole process is up on Patreon for all patrons. So for all members, doesn't matter which tier you uh, choose. So if you're interested in the whole thing, you can have a look on there. The link is in the description. And today I'm showing you um, one hour of drawing fur on the forehead and on the cheeks. So if you're interested, keep on watching. And for color pencil, I'm using polychromos as always. Only the polychromos, so no current dash luminance this time, because I felt like the polychromos worked the best on pastel matte. All right, so have fun watching. Okay, now I want to move on to the other half of the forehead. So let's do that in exactly the same way as I did the left part. So I'm going to start again with cool gray too. And put down a light base layer. I feel like this is going relatively quickly compared to where and when I work on white base. I think that's a little bit more time consuming than this. This is somewhere in between working with pastels and working with colored pencil on white paper. So this half is a little bit darker as the right half of the leopard is in shadow and the left half is catching light. So this one I'm going to leave a bit darker, work with darker colors, darker blues. Alright, a bit of ivory in the inner corner of the eye.
tone it down by adding cool gray 2 on top. And now right away I'm going to start off with some of the darker tones. Moving on again with cool gray 4, 233, Right. And then let's take Paints Gray, darken up the shadow. So I'm now starting to get more comfortable with it. Um, the first few minutes, or maybe a bit longer, I really had to get used to it. But now I, I'm starting to feel quite happy with what it looks like and how it works but it's very different from how I usually work but if you like how this looks and this technique I am definitely happy to do this more often And I didn't watch any videos of artists who professionally work with um, polychromos on pastel mat. There are quite a few actually. So I don't know their techniques. This is just what seems the most logical to me.
right really making sure that the starting point of this half is darker Alright, so let's start adding some color. I am going for Cobalt Blue 143. I'm going to glaze that. So you can see that this part is lighter, so I'm not going to add any blue there. I want to keep the lighter parts pretty warm, like the sun is hitting that area. Shadow parts I'm going to make cooler, so bluer. That will really give a really nice effect. Let's take a darker blue, indenthrene blue, and add that to the parts that are even darker. So I'm just looking at my reference, see which parts look more blue. Right, then I'm taking violet, glazing that on top, especially here on the top of the forehead. now I am going to add well, let's do a little bit of warm gray I haven't added any warm gray yet I do see some warm gray here and there taking warm gray 3 272 I see some warm gray right here Right there. Just glazing that on top. I really like the glazing technique. It works really well on white paper, but I feel like it works even better on pastel mat. All 
right, now it's time to darken up the spots again. Doing that with black. Making sure to keep the pencil sharp for small details like this.
bit of indenturine blue. No, dark indigo blue. On the top of the forehead. In the center. Okay, so now it's time to start working on um, the fur texture and some of the highlights. I am going to take... Warm Grey too. I'm going to add some of the lighter hairs here. going to take a cool gray one also add some lighter hairs mixing warm and cool also make sure to overlap some parts of those dark spots to really involve them and it's going quite easily Okay, 
And now I'm going to take Payne's Gray. With that, I'm going to add some shadows in between the hairs. Make sure it's super sharp. Little more glazing. Make sure that the light parts really pop. I am going to add some white hairs. Not too many, but just some. Where the sun is hitting the hairs Alright, so that's the forehead. I am quite happy with how this looks. So I'm going to leave it like this. Now I'm going to move on with the rest of the face, the center of the face. And then with the ears. So I really hope that you like how this looks so far. Let me know in the comments. Alright, let's move on. I want to move on with the left cheek now. So let's do that. Um, again, I want to start out with mapping out the little markings, the dark spots on the cheek. I'm going to do that again with paint gray. So I already have mapped out these little ones. And we have one here. It's quite important that these are in the right place because they 
they give the face a lot of shape. So if they are shaped the wrong way or in the wrong place, it can deform the face. We won't want that, so... Being very careful with the placement of these markings. So right here we have the edge of the muzzle. Um, a few more. Yeah, let's keep it like this. Let's start off with the base layers. So the fur here right underneath the eye is pretty gray looking. And then right here, it gets more ivory, like brownie toned. And in here I see more coal, so let's start off with coal gray, right there. Um, let's start with coal gray three. Going to put down a very light layer of this. Ooh. 
making sure to go in the direction of the fur growth, the fur is growing like around the eye and then outwards, starting from the side of the muzzle. Going on top of the markings. Let's make this light area fade a bit more. So I have cool gray two here. I'm going on top of that really bright section here underneath the eye, just fading that out. We have a real dark little thing in the inner corner of the eye, so let's put that in before I forget doing that with Payne's Grey. And a tiny bit of um, Van Dyke brown around it. Bit of brown. bit of black to deepen that and then I can add some highlights in the inner corner of the eye with ivory little bit of paint gray Along the edge of the muzzle here, there's a little bit of shadow. And now I'm going to contrast the cool tones with some warm tones. So I'm going to get warm gray to 271. I'm going to add that on top of the cool gray, working outwards again. I'm using quite long strokes. I'm not really focusing on the fur texture yet, just on getting the base tone to look right. Alright, and then right here it gets a lot darker, so I need some more color for that. Some darker tones. So I'm going to get some, some nougat to start with. 
glaze that on top. Now right here, it's getting a lot lighter. Let's see, what color do I need to use for that? I would go for a warm gray, still. Let's continue with warm gray too. And then I can add lighter colors on top. So I'm just going to continue working downwards with this. Warm gray too, 271. Keep an eye on the direction of the fur growth. Looks very weird right now, but it will come together in the end. Alright, and then right here, along the chin, the fur gets really light. So there I'm going to get, um, let's start with a cool gray, two. Cool gray one on top. And then we'll get to this part later. Actually, I see some pink in that light fur, some cinnamon. Let's add some cinnamon, 189. Let's glaze that. So you have to look real good at all the different tones that you see. Yeah, I like that. Going to glaze some violet on this part of the fur, the cooler part. But just with a light hand. 
not being super tidy with it. I'm just scri just scribbling a little bit underneath the eye as well here. I want to make this drawing real nice and colorful. Okay, so let's darken up those uh, markings. I want to do some brown first. I'm going to look for, where is it? My walnut brown. So as the fur gets warmer here, let's warm up those markings as well. So I'm going lightly on top with walnut brown. And uh, that's number 177. Not too much though. Then I am going to add some dark indigo as well. All right, and then with black, I'm going to darken up the darkest ones. Still always drawing in the right direction. So I'm going to ignore all the whiskers now. I'm going to save them for last. How I'm going to do those, I'm not sure yet. I will probably first try with a white colored pencil, just try to draw them in on top of the previous layers. If that doesn't work, I will probably use the white jelly roll pen. But not going to worry about that yet. Okay, let's see if I need to make any changes to the base tone. And I think I do need to darken up some areas. I'm going to take Walnut Brown, darken up base tone right here just by glazing a 
otherwise the fur will look really flat. So I need to have a dark enough base tone before I start adding all the details. And then some more Payne's Grey. Put that on top to contrast the warmth a little bit. So if an area gets too warm, I just go on top with a nice cool color. That usually really works to, uh, to tone it back down. Okay, that's better. So now it's time to add in um, the fur texture. So I'm going to draw in the light hairs now. So right here underneath the eye it's more cool, so I'm going to add the light hairs with cool gray one. Make sure it's very sharp. Then I'm just going to draw in quite short hairs actually. Making sure they are crossing a bit. Making sure each hair is different. And I also make sure to leave open some space in between each hair because I'm going to add darker hairs or darker shadows in between those hairs after. few cool hairs right here on the side of the face though I see mostly warmth there so not too much cool Now for the warmer hairs I'm going to use, let's try some ivory, maybe that's too bright, I'm not sure. And I'm going to use that in the areas where I see more warmth. I also, also have to keep an eye on the fact that this half of the face is a lot lighter than this half. So I really want to put in that difference. Also make sure to overlap the markings.
it is a bit too yellow so I'm going to move on with warm grey now I'm going to see if I can find warm grey one not even sure if I have that one I don't have warm grey one so I'm just going to continue with warm grey two Okay, so now to really make the fur look furry, let's add some darker shadows in between the hairs. And I'm going to do that with Payne's Grey, just like I did on the forehead. I am seeing a little bit of red right here, so I'm going to add some burnt sienna, but very, very little as this is quite an opaque color. I'm just going to slightly add some of that. Okay, so the markings have faded a little bit, so I'm going to go on top with black. So let's darken these up.
making sure it blends nicely with the fur. Now I can also really adjust the shapes. Now I want to do some glazing. I am going to glaze some blue here underneath the eye. This is cobalt blue 143. All right, so that concludes this video for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll be back with more videos now I have my voice back. And um, let me know which other part of the leopard you would like to see. Maybe I'll do some sped up videos as well about it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for your support. And then I'll see you in the next video.